In this video, we'll take a deeper dive into using selectors. If you've written any amount of CSS, you'll be familiar with the basic CSS selectors as well as the advanced CSS selectors. They'll work equally well here as selectors pass to the jQuery method. We'll also look at how to make selections using attributes and their values and how to make selections based on an element's position. We'll wrap up the chapter by using jQuery specific selectors. So these selectors won't necessarily correspond to some of the CSS selectors that you might already be familiar with. You'll need to open up exercise underscore one dot HTML, which is inside of the chapter five using selectors directory. Below the heading in the initial paragraph, you'll see two lists followed by a button. We'll click the button to select all of the LI tags in the document based on our selector and we'll highlight those elements with a background color of yellow. We'll finish the exercise by modifying our selector so that it only selects those LI tags that are in list number one. Inside the source code, you'll see a script block with a document ready function. So all that we need to do now is to find the correct selector for all of the LI tags in the document. Then activate the button so that when it's clicked, the selector that selected those LI elements sets their background color to yellow. So we'll start by activating the button with a CSS selector. The button is in an input tag. And if we scroll down and take a look at it, you'll see that it has an ID of select LI. So I'm going to copy that so that I can use it in my selector. Proceeded, of course, uh, by the pound sign because this is an ID selector. The only piece of syntax missing here is that the value of these selectors must be quoted. So I'm going to make sure I use single or double quotes around the selector, and I'll use single quotes. So we've accessed the button by way of jQuery, and now we'll invoke the click method to respond to the click of that button. And then we'll turn the background color property of the LI tag to yellow. So first we select that LI tag. To select the tag with the basic CSS selector, again, you quote it, and you just put the name of the tag. And you might be familiar with this from CSS. It's often referred to as a tag selector, and you simply use the name of the tag. And in this case, the name of the tag is li. So now that we have the selector, we'll go ahead and set the background property using the CSS method, passing to it two arguments. First one being the property we want to set, in this case, background color. And the second argument is the value we'd like to set for that property, in this case, yellow. You can proofread that quickly, and then we'll test it in the browser. We'll go ahead and click the Select LI Elements button, and we should see all of the LI elements in the document highlighted in yellow. Next, we'll move on to step two, where we'll modify the code so that we select only those LI elements that are in the top list, or list one. We'll return to the source code and make a simple modification. We'll go to the selector that selects all the LI tags in the document, and we'll modify the selector so that it only selects LI tags that are children of another tag. So the parent tag goes first, followed by a spacebar, and then the tag that you're trying to turn into a wrapped set. So list1 is inside of a div tag whose ID is list1, and the li tags in list2 are wrapped in a div tag whose ID is list2. So all we need to do is invoke the proper parent here. So I'm going to copy list1, our first list, and then modify the selector to point to that div, and there's the parent-child relationship. If you've written CSS, you're probably familiar with this selector. It's the parent tag which is this div list one, followed by a spacebar, then all li tags underneath that parent tag will be selected. So let's save and we'll test this in the browser. We'll click the same button, but that button should only select li elements in list one. So that's the basic tag selector used in CSS, and as you've seen here, it's uh, used equally well in jQuery.